Good evening and welcome to what promises to be a very special night of distance running. This is the NN Valencia World Record Day here in an intimate atmospheric Estadi del Turia in the heart of the city. Huge efforts from everybody involved to make sure tonight can happen safely and in accordance with all the rules. We are all set for two global stars taking on world records that have stood for more than a decade. Letessa Betgide, third from the right-hand side. What an athlete. Silver medalist in the 10,000 metres last year. Bronze in the world cross-country, but twice a world junior cross-country champion. And that really takes some doing. Just a confirmation of some of her accolades and that eye-watering 44.20. Apparently, her 10K split en route to that world best. We can't call it a world record. It's a rarely run distance. One of her splits was 29.40. It is a really tough task tonight. The record has stood to Tiranish de Barba since 2008. But if anybody can do it, it is Letessa Betgide. She needs a 12 second PB, but we've got some brilliant pacemakers to help drag her round. Confirmation, it is de Barba's world record from 12 years ago. Such excitement here in Valencia. It's a lovely stadium set around about 12 to 15 meters beneath road level so thankfully there's not a breath of wind it's all about Gide, our pacemakers Esther Guerrero and Beatrice Chipkoech yes the Beatrice Chipkoech who just happens to be the reigning world champion and world record holder at the 3000 meters steeplechase not a bad athlete to accompany the Tessa Bet Gide around this 12 and a half laps well NN decided not to charge to show this race so we have people tuning in from all over the world flow track in the united states world athletics are showing it on their live stream so to nn's very own youtube channel and we're on bbc.com so wherever you are in the world there's beatrice chepkoech the 3000 meter steeplechase world champion wherever you are in the world you can tune in if you've got access to a phone or a tablet Will we see glory and history tonight for Letessa Betgide? Winnie Nanyondo, very good athlete, more known as an 800 meter runner, just missed the podium last year in Doha. Got a collection of Spanish athletes. Ruiz, just under 80 minutes in the Valencia half last year. Romero outside her, 211 PB over the 800 meters the organizers quite rightly deciding we should have an opportunity for some local talent to get in amongst this historic race ninth fastest in history her pb 1423 that was in rabat a couple of years ago 1426 just lost out to helena beery last month but she is a very very quick learner latessa beckide just 22 years of age third from the left hand side getting herself poised and ready for this assault one of the hardest distance running records to beat Chepkoech will be the second of our pacemakers to keep going Esther Guerrero should get us through the first three and a half to four laps. Now, the key here is that Letessa Betgide has asked for very steady pacing. She needs to run each lap in 68 seconds if she's to stand a chance of coming home in 14.10. But we're reliably informed by everybody connected to the pacemaking that she's asked to build things up a little slowly. She's not an athlete who particularly enjoys a sprint finish. She wants the first three laps in 69, then graduate to 68, and then will come the hard bit. Four laps at 67 to make up the difference. All about Letessa Betgide. She cut a slightly nervous looking figure at the press conference here at the stadium a couple of days ago. So many tests we've all had, and those of us who've traveled from outside Spain have had to have special written permission on a Spanish ministerial level. So no expense has been spared. I'd say the health and safety is comparable to that which we saw from the London Marathon on Sunday. 
Here we go then. Does history beckon for Letess and Bet Dide? We will be watching the clock, but there is a reason that record of Tyranish de Barbers has stood for 12 years. She's one of the all-time greats. And speaking of all-time greats, I'm delighted to be sitting alongside Sonia Rose Sullivan, who won the inaugural world title over 5,000 metres and reminded me is still the outdoor 2,000 metre world record holder from 1994 and an Olympic silver medal as well. Sonia, a very good evening. We're really looking forward to this tonight, but it's a massive, massive task this for Gide, isn't it? It Absolutely. really is. Absolutely. It's a really, really tough record. I mean, it's been there for 12 years and you know when you break it down into the pace per lap it you know it, it doesn't seem too difficult 69 second lap 68 67 but they do accumulate over time and you know it, it takes a toll on the athlete to concentrate and to keep that pace up over 12 and a half laps of the track um, but Gide she has a specific pace target here she's obviously practiced this in training and feels that if she starts off a little bit slower you know it's a the fine detail of one second slower for the first three laps and then gradually increasing one second for the next three laps and then again so it will be interesting to see how she hits those paces early on and um, how she can pick them up as the race goes on well we've got a little bit of assistance as a nice smile on the face of Esther Guerrero there. We have been allowed a small-ish crowd, and I mentioned that the stadium is about 15 metres below street level, and there's an amazing vista all along the main street, outside the confines of the stadium. People are lining along the ancient city walls. You might just be able to, to get a glimpse. And there is our first little indication of wave light. Now, we've got this great technology to help us well, mainly to help the commentators and the spectators, because I'm reliably informed that actually most athletes don't notice. You, you'll have an opinion on that in a moment, Sonia. But the blue lights that accompany the athletes around the track, that's for the pacemakers, and that is set at around about eight metres ahead of world record pace. You'll see the green lights flashing on their way round. The green light indicates a world record pace. Gide is ahead at the moment. Do you... Do you think they'll even be noticing that, Sonia? I mean, a couple of coaches have said to me, it's fine for you lot watching, but when they're in the heat of battle, that they already know what their pace should be. Well, I think the pacemakers definitely will be focusing on the lights and trying to keep pace with the lights. And towards the latter stages of the races, possibly um, Gide um, will be focusing on the lights as something to keep up with. So, three seconds outside world record pace. Turinish de Barber went through in 2.48. So, she's got a little bit of work to do at the moment, Latessa and Bette Gide. And that's what she asked for. So, she's OK at the moment. But we need to keep a very close eye when we get onto the middle section of the race where she knows she has to pick it up to 68s and then up to 67s. Guerrero has done a good job there, so it now comes down to Beatrice Chip Coetch. We mentioned at the start, I mean, when I first saw her name, Sonia, I thought she was going to have an attack on her PB. And brilliant that she's decided to come along and help out Latessa Gide in this quest for history. Well, I think Beatrice, she ran in Doha just under two weeks ago, 8.22 for 3,000 metres. And, um, you know, the season is so short this year and very few races that she didn't want to just go home and end the season early. And when she asked if there's any more races and was heard about this race she wanted to come and help to set the pace and to be involved in this world record attempt tonight and we are delighted that she has come along low 69s it's okay but we now need to start seeing this pick up a little bit towards 68 seconds it's been interesting Sonia the, the conditions I know you're slightly concerned about the humidity especially for Joshua Cheptegei's 10,000 meter attempt which will be coming up in around about 20 minutes time but as far as the wind is concerned it's dropped perfectly from quite a blustery afternoon well the wind does tend to pick up here in Valencia in the afternoon um, but you know we've been here for three days now and noticed each evening that it has dropped down so that was never really a concern um, I think Gide, you know, she looks like she is so focused here. And, you know, while she's got the, the back of Beatrice Kipkoetsch to, you know, keep her focus on, then um, she can 
be as relaxed as she is looking here right now and they are still clearly ahead of the green world record pace lights and sticking with the blue ones and um there you go through here again now and that was about 68 second lap again so they're right on pace because this is what she wanted um was to increase over the next three laps and so after this lap they'll be dropping down to 67s well in fact it looked like unofficially that might have been a high 67s that one 67.8 you've broken a world record i mentioned that great race with yvonne murray back in 1994 it how different is it in your mindset when you're going for a time instead of a medal? The mere mortals among us don't know the difference. You do. Well, it can be quite different, you know, if you're, you know, racing the clock or there's actually somebody else in the race with you. So here, Gidi, you know, it will come to the point where she will be just herself against the clock. Um, you know, when you're with another athlete there, you have to make your mind up what's more important. But here it's specifically on the time. And I suppose it will be, you know, how committed she can be to really up her game and to push on and to, you know, really needs to move up a little bit here now on these lights. They're right on world record pace at the moment. And um, Gide, she has, you know, let us know that she is an athlete who needs a constant, consistent pace throughout the race. She's not somebody who, you know, picks up her pace dramatically over the last few laps, like someone like Turnish Dababa would be, you know, and you gain bonus seconds in those last laps, whereas I think she really needs to stay ahead of those green lights as much as possible here tonight. Yes, especially because when you bear in mind how Turnish Dababa finished that world record 12 years ago, she ran the last kilometre in 2.42, the last 800 was 2.09. So you're absolutely right, Dababa tended to finish with a flourish. And what a fantastic record it would be to take. I, I'm really excited by Gide, even if she doesn't do it tonight. When she won those two editions of the World Junior Cross, you knew then what a special athlete she was going to be because that really takes some doing. You sometimes see athletes come through and win one World Junior, but to be around that young, early when you're 17, to win the first one, and then to get the second one when you're 19, you know you're dealing with somebody who's very capable, and injuries notwithstanding, someone who's going to be around for a long time. Well, the World Junior Cross Country is one of those races that you see the most fearless athletes out there. You know, they just attack the race, and it's a step into the unknown. Um, to see athletes, you know, push on from that, and we just had another 68-second lap there now, so we're still maintaining good pace here. Um, you know, so I think Gide, she's really making a name for herself now. She was second at the World Championships last year. She's been out sprinted on a number of occasions um, by Sifan Hassan when she's trying to keep up with her. And, um, you know, she really wants to focus on this race herself tonight um, to do at her pace and not have to worry about somebody on her shoulder who, you know, it's not nice when you're leading when there's somebody right on your shoulder. So to have the opportunity here tonight to run this race her way and to attack the race in the way that she wants to do it. It's not easy when you're out there running by yourself. Um, but now here she looks like she actually wants to go past Beatrice Kipkoic. Maybe she's slowing a little bit here, but we'll be coming up soon now to the 3000 meter mark, which is a key um, time here. And she is well on pace here. I mean, this is going through the line there in 8.31.85, which is well and truly under the 8.32 that she has in her mind. And the thing is, this is with athletes, endurance athletes, they do the training, but you have numbers in your head that, you know, when you hit those targets, it gives you that extra bit of confidence going into the last few laps. And, uh, you know, there's five laps to go here now. Next time around, we'll be have a mile to go. It's still a long way to go, and she really has to focus here now. And this is a point where you know, those lights pacing, wave lights could become very, very important for her to have something to focus on if she can see them. I don't know, I've never actually run on a track with lights like that. Um, if it's something that she can keep in her eyesight, you know, it's an interesting um, accessory, I suppose, to have at a track when you're trying to chase a time and you're running against the clock. Well, it's been brilliant so far. Beatrice Chip Coetz has done a fantastic job taking her through 3,000 metres. But these laps now will really start to hurt. She's got a chance here, she really has. She's running brilliantly. Nanyondo has already moved out 66 and a half. That's excellent running. Good but work there from Nanyondo just to sense that Gide was coming through on the inside. No time lost there, but this will really hurt. And we do have to remember 
that Tyrannish to Barber's sped up towards the end. So this is by no means a certainty, but she's given herself such a great chance. She's given herself every chance here, and she is a picture of relaxation here as she heads into, you know, just coming up to a mile to go. And, you know, you just hope that she didn't get too excited there when Beatrice dropped, dropped out, you know, to ensure the, you know, continuation of the pace. But I don't know, this looks very solid right now. Um, and now she's coming down with three laps to go will be the next time. You know, when you get inside that last kilometer of the race, that's when you really, really need to dig deep. And when you can dig deep, because it's the final section of the race. Letess and Bet Guide is three laps away from a place in history here in the Estadio del Turia. It's been such a superb team effort. The Dutch, figureheaded by Global Sports Communications, Jos Hermans, have been determined that this race be as accessible as possible for people to watch and as safe as possible for the athletes to come along. They've done a fantastic job, as have the Spanish local organising team, who are more used to laying on road races. Valencia, well known for its marathons, half marathons and 10Ks. It's been a massive team effort from everybody involved. We've just gone through the 4K mark in 11.19, which is bang on target. This requires a two minutes and 50 seconds for the last kilometer, which is very, very achievable. She can do this, and if she does, it will be a just reward for so much effort from so many people. A few local athletes have been allowed in, but as you can tell, almost everybody wearing a mask. They're very hot on that here in Spain. You're not allowed without a mask unless you are exercising. Coming round now, this with two final. laps to go, can she do it? It's the final 800 metres. This is going to take. Yeah, this is possible. It's 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 not as fast as Debaba ran for the last 800 metres, but she doesn't need to run that fast. She needs to keep pace with these lights. The wave lights are doing a good job. Kide is doing a fantastic job to maintain pace with them, and I would love to know if she can actually see those lights and she's keeping up with them because this is fantastic to watch and it just shows us you know how she is keeping pace with this record her form has been maintained beautifully she's a lovely flowing runner to watch now it's got to her she's in uncharted territory here she's the ninth fastest in history we know all about her brilliant credentials in cross country she took a step up in class last year, taking the silver behind Sifan Hassan in the 10,000 metres. But wherever you are in the world, even though she won't hear you, give a shout out to the TV, give a roar, because this young 22-year-old from Ethiopia is 400 metres away from glory. There's the bell. This is absolutely sensational. Can she keep this going? 67 on the nose. It's been metronomic. Lap after lap, after lap. A little glance over her shoulder. She's got to be able to do this. It's been a fantastic effort. It's a record that has stood for 12 years. This has been a year that's been so hard for so many people. And here she is pouring her heart and soul out here, an inspiration to young women all across Ethiopia, all across Africa, all across the world. This has been a performance of such heart. Twice a global champion at cross country. Outdoors a silver medalist last year in Doha. But this would be the crowning moment so far, surely. She's got about 110 metres to go. I'm having to stand up because everybody in front of us has got their mobile phones out. Letess and Bekhide driving for history, driving for the line. Come on, come on, Letess and Bet, you can do this. It's going to be a new world record in Valencia. Unbelievable. 14.06. She has smashed. She has smashed a record that has stood to the greatest 10,000 metre runner in history for more than 12 years. There's the embrace for Beatrice Chepkoec. And in a year that's been so, so hard for so many people, what a moment of inspiration from a 22-year-old who has just run the race of her life. Wow! That is just something else. I mean, it just looks so easy. I mean, how she did that and, you know, maintained such focus and relaxation throughout. I mean, it's just unbelievable that she was able to maintain that throughout and by herself over those last five laps was absolutely amazing. She just got quicker and quicker and, 
you know, for us to be watching the wave lines, she was just running further and further away. It was just the perfect, you know, start to the night. I think Joshua Cheptegei, you know, was the focus for tonight, but now he's got a lot to live up to when he steps up here for the 10,000 meters in a few minutes' time. Do you know what, Sonia? That was just an absolutely amazing piece of distance running because you could tell that it was, you knew it was going to be hard the last 2,000 metres after Chep Koech stepped aside, but she was just absolutely metronomic. She did exactly what she needed to. She upped the pace to 68s, up the pace to 67s. That is a huge margin to take off a record that has stood the test of time. I don't think I've ever seen anybody run so easy over 5,000 metres and run so fast, you know, at this level. Um, you know, normally you see the final 400 metres is, you know, as fast as possible it's like you know they're sprinting it but she just maintained the constant pace throughout it was definitely a, a different way of breaking a world record you know just gradually increasing the pace as each lap went on this was the last 100 meters a couple of times she glanced around it, it was just spellbinding what, I, what an absolute <laughs> privilege Sonia O'Sullivan for both of us to be allowed here to witness that it was just remarkable no, it's not something you know i expected to see this year you know the year that we've had for athletics and this is coming you know so late in the season it's a bonus and you know athletes have gone out there this year they've taken opportunities and they've taken risks to try and push the barriers and you know you see something like that and you start thinking you know when is the first woman going to break 14 minutes for 5,000 meters you know we're getting down to that territory now Absolutely incredible. The Estadio del Turia has produced a world record. And, and you're quite right, all our focus was on Joshua Cheptegei, especially the manner in which he took the 5,000 metre world record mid-August. We knew Gide had a chance, but that was such a tough mark to try and come here and tame. At the end of you know, such a disrupted season for everybody. You know, all these big training groups have been forced to work alone, but she, she's done it. We were apparently going to try and grab an interview with her, but we've got the men coming out for the 10,000 meters. So we might try and get hold of Letessa and Bet Gide towards the end of our coverage. Stay with us. We promised you an assault on two world records. One is 100% <laughs> so far. <laughs> one down, one to go, and the next is going to be equally as enthralling over double the distance as Latessa Bet Gide embarks on her lap of honour. We now start thinking about the men's 10,000 metres, where the reigning world champion is trying to take down Kenanisa Bekele's record that has stood for 16 years. This is the country he calls home. It's Joshua Cheptegei. He went over to Kenya when he won the world junior title. Didn't like it over there. Decided to come home. And it's been a successful partnership with his coach, Adi Ruta. And now he's here to add the 10,000 record to the 5,000. Here's what he had to say before the race. Well, we will try and get you that preview interview as and when we can. Confirmation, Kennedy Sibikaili's world record, 26-17. Apparently, here is the preview interview now. It's really special for me here to be here, you know. But one thing I love about Valencia, of course, is about, uh, you know, the running culture. You see everybody running in the park, you know, and the... The people are amazing. Ideally, of course, you know, the year has been so difficult. <laughs> and it started with the, the World Half Marathon Championship being uh, cancelled in, in March. And then uh, the next was, of course, the Olympic Games. It was really cancelled. So it has been actually in my mind for a long time. And uh, it's now, now to go and, uh, of course, go after the record tomorrow. 
all of them are spectacular performances and uh, spectacular world records that not anyone can touch. So, you know, having one is really, you know, special, you know, and if you can have two, it's more special, you know. All this, uh, you know, is about uh, uh, having the right, the right people around you and uh, it builds up to something great, you know. I think it would, uh, it would really mean the whole world to me, you know, it would be really a special moment for me and uh, the running world, of course, to see that uh, a record is broken after a couple of uh, 15 years or 16 years down the road, so it would be really actually a while to me, you know. Joshua Cheptegei is poised and ready for his assault on history after Latessa Betgide's fantastic performance. Shadrach Chip Church here is going for sub 27 minutes as is Stephen Kisser and Victor Kiblanga of Uganda. But we've got some great pacemakers here. Trio of Australians. Stuart McSwain in particular has had a fantastic season. Three national records. He'll be going for the 5,000 on Saturday in Pengalo. So, Joshua Cheptegei going for glory assisted by a whole team of pacemakers. The reigning world champion, the world cross-country champion. And what a fantastic record he took from Kenanisa Bekele in August, over 5,000 meters. His last five laps in Monaco was simply sensational. Jorn Kodiman on the outside. We've got a couple of Dutch taking part here, including Luke Mass, who we've just got a glimpse of there. It was his idea to come up with the wave light technology. But this is all about the Ugandan. He's the reigning Commonwealth champion as well. Did the double on the Gold Coast. I was there for that brilliant racing. He's a young man with big ambitions and a big personality. He told us at the press conference, looks relaxed, doesn't he? Told us at the press conference he wanted to become the greatest distance runner in history. It is a punchy aspiration, but so far in his young career, he is delivering. He's a, a mature man, he's already married, despite the fact that he's just turned 24. His wife, Carol, will be watching. And his two young children, three-year-old son and baby daughter. And we'll have time to talk about this guy's personality and his impact across Uganda and across Africa in the early part of the race but he's aiming for 63 seconds a lap to try and take this record that has stood for 16 years joshua chapter guy he'll be following the familiar figure of roy kruenweg his job to do the early pace making duties couple of national titles for the dutchman and it's Sonia, bit... once again it's it, this is this is brutal but how much confidence do you think he would have taken from from the 5000 arguably is weaker distance if he has one um yeah well he's more known for the longer distances world cross country 10000 meters um winning the world championships and again this is you know it's a bit of a test of concentration here and relaxation from the early stages you know to set the pace but to do it you know in an even way and joshua has asked unlike um Gide, she he has asked for a much more even pace he wants to go exactly 63 seconds each lap and they are bang on just 6304 for the first lap and this is the thing you don't want to panic too much and try to gain time early particularly in a 10,000 meters it is a long way to go 24 laps at a track to go now and you know the first half of the race is really just about getting there as easy as you possibly can and then start to work um, this race it's actually kind of breaking into two already we have um, the second pack is going for to try and get some of the athletes to run under 27 minutes um, but from the front we have um yeah Roy 
Roy, Roy is, Hornvig. He's going to lead out for um, 1500 meters and you know take the 63 second lap, and then he's followed by Matthew Ramsden, who's had an absolutely fantastic season this year, um, athlete from Australia. Um, he's broken PBs over 3000 meter, 5000 meters, 334 for 1500 meters, and he will hope to get as far as 4000 meters tonight. This is really good from Roy. He works with the NN running team who along with the expertise of the Globo Sports Communication, they have put this race on. And as I mentioned, if you're just joining us, we really hope you're enjoying this coverage free of charge around the world. The organizers decided they did not want to make a penny from tonight. They felt this needed to be a celebration of distance running. And Sonia, we said at the beginning, this is a really important night for our sport because athletics doesn't always get the opportunity to sit front and center. And it is tonight and, and with the best of intentions from everybody involved and, and what a night already and what a start this evening. It's been an absolutely fantastic start to the night and you know it's a way of highlighting individual athletes oftentimes in track meets we have so many events going on track and field events and you know great performances can get lost in, in the night um, but here we have the chance to highlight great athletes and elevate them you know to their greatness and showcase you know what indiv individual athletes can do and you know they don't just do it by themselves that's why we have all these pacemakers here tonight to help them out a lot of these athletes they work in teams who help them with their training and then other athletes you know some of these athletes are the best athletes in the world some of the best athletes in their countries who are giving up their time to come and help here tonight because that's what it takes you know pacemaking is not an easy job these days you know you need some really quality athletes to be able to maintain these paces and to help athletes to push the limits of you know the fastest times that anyone's ever run in the world before and you know as the years go on that gets harder and harder to do well there's a real electricity around this tiny stadium i can promise you that there are people crowded round on the walls on street level just a reminder the stadium is in a, a sort of fantastic natural amphitheater i believe we're on the site of the former riverbed and there are man-made lakes palm trees it's are a fantastic place to come and exercise 62.9 he's we, okay at the moment and we've just hit our first significant landmark for many people a 412 mile uh, 413 is the pace that we're looking for um, five miles to go um, in old language um, and Matt Ramsen it's his job now to get us you know to 3,000 meters we're looking at 752 um, and then we'll see how far he can push on from there but you know the pacemakers you know the the further they can go at the more even pace and the more they can carry Joshua you know to the point where he will then have to start working himself and you know that's probably when he will have to start looking at the lights here as well and they are just you know running right on world record pace right now um, they're not trying to get too far ahead of it because it's a long way to go and you know you just don't want to burn the energy too early in the race and save you know something for those last laps yeah no, I think we should clarify as well that Joshua's got to run a massive 31 second PB so people might say well hang on a minute surely that's far too big a margin but he needed a 22 second PB to take the 5,000 meter record and he managed that with room to spare so it's it's an interesting challenge and it's a mark of how confident he's feeling that the fact that he's never run within half a minute of Kenanisa Bekele's record doesn't bother him. Um, no, well, you know, I think he just wouldn't be looking at the record per se or what he has done himself in the past, but more, you know, focus on what he's done this year and, um, you know, what that equates to. And, you know, on paper, you know, he should, you know, be definitely within range of breaking this record. But, you know, it is a long way out here. It's a, it's, it's a tough, tough event, you know. It's quite different over 5,000 meters. You know, there's less laps you have to run by yourself. I think here he may be left with a lot more laps to run by himself. And, you know, it will be actually after running at, you know, such a fast pace for a longer distance as well. Um, but he's trained for this. He's prepared for this. And I'm sure he knows what to expect. But they are just running nicely on the pace right now, staying even, not trying to get too far ahead. Um, and, you know, 
pick up the pace in those lat saving something for the end which is what he needs when he's going to be by himself and when he's be looking at those um, blue staying ahead of the green lights we're bang on it right now yes he he's going to have to answer some savage questions I was talking to his coach Adi Ruta had a fascinating hour with him the other day in the team hotel and, and he was saying that Joshua has a massive appetite for pain and that's and that's that's what he needs he says I don't really need to equip him with any mental tools to try and cope with the pain he's he's just he's just born with a gift to take punishment and that's what he's going to need to be able to do tonight absolutely and he's got Nicholas um, Kip career here waiting to take over from Matt Ramson um, once they get past three three and a half thousand meters um, and he has actually got the fastest time in the world this year for 10,000 meters at 2658 um, just a few weeks ago so he knows what it's like to go the full distance so he'll be aiming to run a little bit quicker than he's run just a few weeks ago and um, help Joshua to get to a point where he's confident that he can take it home. Matt Ramston's done a good job here. 7.52. They are absolutely bang on world record pace at the moment. There's uh, Roy Huenvig just in the foreground. He'll be delighted with what he's seeing so far. There's such a, there's such a spirit of generosity amongst distance runners, which sounds like a cliche, but these guys and, and the men and women in the crowd who've run a 5,000 and 10,000 at whatever pace, they know this hurts. And you just have to look at how hard Ramson is working here. You know, he's just got himself an extra 200 meters there. And that's just one third into the race. You know, there is still a long way to go here. Um, Joshua is looking pretty relaxed. Uh, Nicholas is also looking relaxed. And that is what you have to maintain for as long as possible into the race. Because it's, you know, the, the laps are adding up here and they are on pace. But I agree with you, he needs Nicholas to keep going as long as he possibly can. They've actually moved a little further up the trail of green lights, it's five in total. And then the front of the blue lights is set at eight metres in front of world record pace to help the pacemakers. But uh, Kip Career Camelli, to use both of his uh, surnames, he's a 12.51 man. Third in the National Cross Country at the start of this year in Kenya, and that is absolutely no mean feat. Now, the last lap was 62.9. This, this is good so far for yeah, Joshua Chetagai, 62.4. This is what he needs, Sonia, it's metronomic. Yeah, just to be able to maintain that even pace, you know, a little bit under 63, a little bit over 63, you know, you just to keep that going um, for as long as possible. And, you know, I'm sure that um, Joshua Chetagai guy he will be able to pick up the pace over the last four laps but he just wants to get there feeling good and right now they are working really well together I think um, Nicholas he's not pushing too hard yet he's um, we'll be, the, the next key marker that we'll be looking for is the 5,000 meter mark you know to be passing to in 1307 you know that would be the national record in many countries it's a pretty astonishing that he'll be coming close to, you know, 13 minutes at the halfway split. I know, and, and I guess, again, we, we chatted over breakfast the other day. 13.06, 13.07 is, is ludicrous, as you say, that's world class. But if you look at the world record he set over 5,000 metres, 12.35, he's got the knowledge, bang on at the moment, he's got the knowledge that 12.35 He's run for, for, for 5,000. So if he goes through in 13.05, he can say to himself, I've run half a minute quicker than this, so, yeah, so I should be comfortable. Yeah, I think, you know, it's you know, like watching the women's 5,000 metres. When you break it down into the laps, it's a very achievable, The you know, the 400 metre times, the 1,000 metre times, the halfway times even, 3,000 metres. Um, but when you put it all together and add it all up, it does take a toll. And, you know, that's where... He just has to continually maintain that constant, even pacing. Um, and, you know, you can just see here the wave lights, they're keeping track of it. It's, it will be interesting to talk to the athletes after and see if they have been helped by these lights or even notice them there. 
I, I think Gide definitely did, by the way, because she glanced back over her left shoulder a couple of times as she was hugging the bend. 63 on the nose for that one, 600 metres to go before we reach halfway. And there were a couple of little moments there where there were some gaps appearing uh, between the Kenyan and the Ugandan, but Joshua Cheptegei has closed that up really nicely. We mentioned Uganda, and we're hoping that there'll be many people tuning in in a very proud, beautiful country. So if you are watching from that brilliant East African nation, then Oliochia, I hope you're having a great time. And, and it's, it's refreshing, Sonia, that with the likes of Stephen Kipricic taking the, the marathon for Uganda in 2012 in, in London, and then we had Dorcas Inzakuru back in 05 winning the women's steeplechase, and Nakai won the women's 800 last year as Cheptegei took the 10,000. The Ugandans are beginning to become a force to be reckoned with in global distance running. It's not just about the Ethiopians and Kenyans anymore. No, it's more African nations, you know, seeing what their neighbours are doing and stepping up to the mark. And, you know, it's a, particularly you see it in the World Cross Country when you have the team event and the athletes are out there and they're encouraged by what they see from, you know, great athletes in the country. They want to be a part of this and um, you know Joshua you need someone like Joshua as an inspiration to athletes to look up to and um, you know he's he's doing it that just tonight now he's really looks like he's um, sitting in the back pocket of Nicholas Trip <laughs> Kip career tonight and he's getting he's as close as can be there now I just wonder if um, he had 1307 73 that is bang on, you know, exactly what they need at halfway. Um, you know, to run the same again will be the world record. Um, so just to maintain this even pace and be able to pick it up, but it looks like he's going to have to go a long way, a long run for home right now. It's going to be 12 laps for Joshua Cheptegei. Yes, is the Kenyan, himself. is he going to stop? I think he's just about had enough. This is the loneliness now of the long distance runner. Nicholas Kipkaria Kameli is carrying on, but his duties of towing Joshua Cheptegei around to a world record have come to an end. Cheptegei is now on his own. He's being roared on though by a growing number of people sitting on the city wall. You might just be able to get a glimpse of them there to the left of the Estadi del Turia. I tell you what, this isn't the biggest stadium and we've never seen a world record here until tonight, thanks to Latessa Bekide. I think a whole host of athletes would love to come and compete here. It's not huge. We're not talking about 40,000 people, even without the COVID restrictions, but there's an intimacy and there's a real atmosphere about this stadium and, and, and the way it's sort of formed in this Colosseum shape with people all around on the city walls. I think this is a cracking place for athletics. It's, it's a stunning stadium. Um, you know, the, the location and the, the positioning of it is unbelievable. You don't see many tracks like this anywhere in the world where they are dropped down a level. So the shelter here is, you know, on a windy day, it would probably be not so, it would be very sheltered. But, you know, the conditions here tonight are absolutely perfect. Um, Joshua, I'm sure he was hoping Nicholas would go a little bit further. They were hoping maybe 7K. So he really now has to make his mind up and really go for this. You know, it's it's not an easy task that he has set for himself here tonight. Um, and he's on his own right now, but he is in running with the world record pace. He's right in the middle of it. I suppose he, he's focusing on the blue lights, if he can see them. And, you know, I think, you know, if this, you know, is such a help to the athletes tonight, this could be a new, you know, development for athletics. You know, to, it's, it's something new to help us to push the barriers that, you know, many athletes see there at all levels. And you know what? I just noticed a little almost imperceptible acceleration there because I think he sensed that this is getting a little bit tight. It's only half a second mm -hmm. or so, but He's still looking OK at the moment. He's got to keep hammering these laps out. So much effort, so much work with Adi Ruta in Uganda. And I, I, I think it's really brave of him to have won the World Junior title and then gone over to a big training group in Kenya and got in touch with, with Global and got in touch with NN Running and said, look, this isn't really working for me. I'm, I'm happy to hurt myself. I'm not after an easy ride. 
but some of these long 40k runs that these older marathon runners are doing and he was a teenager at the time they're not working for me and my body's not reacting i want to go home can you help me find a coach who can work with me back in uganda because that's where i think i can get the best out of myself and boy oh boy did that turn out to be a great decision because since then he's added the world senior title the cross country title and a world record called the world best over 15k so he that gives you the impression, Sonia, this guy has, has got maturity and he's got emotional intelligence as well as a racing brain. He understands what he needs to get to the top. He does, and that when you get that positive feedback and, you know, you set goals and targets for yourself and you achieve them, then you get a lot of momentum into your, you know, the training that you're doing, the racing that you're doing, your, your whole belief and confidence grows and you feel that anything is possible. You know, you start to believe that you can do anything. And I think that's what Joshua has done here. You know, he set the 5,000 meter world record uh, 12.35. It looked so easy at the time, particularly the last four laps of that race that I think he truly believes that, you know, he can achieve things that seem impossible. And he looks like he is sitting on these lights here tonight. Now he's jumped onto the blue, which is great to see with eight laps to go, 17.50. And that's well, well ahead of the schedule here that we're looking at. 62.5 for that lap. And that may be the reason why he is on the blue lights, which remember are indicative of the pacemakers being seven or eight meters ahead of world record pace. He's trying to achieve something really special here. Kenanisa Bekele's world record has stood since 2005. Only three men have ever run inside 26.30. Bekele obviously with the world record and the legendary cross country runner, Paul Turgat setting the world record and Haile Gabri Selassie as well. And he's picking up again here. He's giving himself some room for error towards the end of the race. It, it's a glittering list of men to have run under 26.30 and he's giving himself a great chance of joining them. He has and he once again has hit one of his target times over on the back straight with four thousand, with seven laps to go. So just under 3,000 meters to go here. And now he is definitely within the range that, you know, it starts to feel easy when you're in the single digits, you know, he's getting around there. It'll soon be down to two kilometers. Two kilometers to go will really break it down in his head that he can actually do this. So I think he really has to concentrate. He can actually um, focus a little bit on the athletes that he is catching and passing here now. That will give him a little bit of motivation to, you know, push himself and to catch up and to go by quickly. And, um, you know, while also maintaining contact with the pace here and check, I'm sure he will be keeping an eye on the clock every time he comes around. If you're a fan of the history of great sport, then what about the list of names he's trying to join as a 10,000 meter world record holder? Emil Zatopek first broke the six and a quarter mile world best in Ostrava. There's a statue of him there. I was there for the Continental Cup and had a photo beneath it back in 1949. Then you move into the 60s. The legendary Australian distance runner, Ron Clark, who got a bronze in 64 and then famously needed oxygen at the high altitude of 68. He's been a world record holder. Lassie Viren in the 70s, a four-time Olympic champion, did the double in 72 and 76. And then you move in to the likes of the 90s. Three times Haile Gabri Selassie has held this record. Paul Turgat as well, all of them with glittering careers in cross country and track and the road. Turgat, the first man under 205 for the marathon. Gabri Selassie was the first man under 204. Both of them proud holders of the 10,000 meter world record before it passed to Kenanisa Bekele, a six time long course cross country world champion and a triple Olympic champion, 5,000 and 10,000 meters. It's a glittering list of who's who in terms of the all-time greats. And that's the kind of company that Joshua Chetagai would be in if he can somehow keep this going. And I'll tell you what, Sonia, he's getting a standing ovation from the crowd here, even though he's got five to go. And he's just passed through with two kilometers to go, and he is still on world record pace. In fact, he is under one world record pace. You know, as each lap goes by, he's just going to get more and more motivation to belief and confidence that he is able to do this. And right now, he is still maintaining that relaxation that we saw in Monaco over the 5,000 meters. Um, 
I think for you know someone who's a 5,000 meter runner, a 10,000 meter runner, when they see one mile to go, one lap or four laps of the track to go, that is a small, you know, it's, it's not something that is unachievable for them. They're kind of what I would call within range of really racing to um, achieve the record. This is absolutely incredible. Wherever you're watching this in the world, I hope you're enjoying this. Distance running, free to view anywhere on the planet because we're watching something really, really special here. This was the NM Valencia World Record Day. We've seen one, surely. We can't be on the way to seeing another, can we? 62.9, lap after lap after lap. He's edging ever closer to a place in the history books. He's only run twice this year, Sonia, and on both occasions he's broken a world record. World 5K on the roads back in February in Monaco, then the 5,000 metres on the track in August. If he does this though, there's such a mystique, there's such a majesty about the 10,000 metres. 25 soul-destroying laps of a track. I think this would beat the other two. I think this would be the key run of the year, and I'd actually rank this alongside winning the 10,000 last year in Doha. This would be some achievement. I think it would just be another stamp of approval of his greatness, and it's hard to even hear what's going on here now with three laps to go. And this is very, very possible with 23 of, that's another 63 second lap there. I mean, it's just like, but knocking off these laps even after even after even and I can see a sprint coming for the last lap so I'm I don't know I think we can start <laughs> we want to stand up and start celebrating right now but with one kilometer to go you know this is where you know the concentration may turn into racing and you know there's a number of athletes that he's laughing here to chase 23 36 with one kilometer to go he is 1.5 seconds under his projected time which is well under world record pace so this is definitely it's been world record day in valencia today it's been named that this could be a holiday after tonight <laughs> this is so exciting we really hope you're enjoying this i just can't stop smiling i can't believe what we're in the process of witnessing here if if he can keep it going two laps to go and if you're watching this with a, a little brother or a sister or a son or a daughter or a niece or a nephew get them down to your local athletics track this is the most accessible friendly sport in the world if you can run or jump or throw you can be a world-class athlete there is no barrier where our sport is concerned and these are the kind of images that inspire the next generation of global stars. Not only perhaps in Uganda or across Africa, but around the world. He is standing as a symbol of all that is great. He's pouring his heart and soul into this record attempt, into this journey to greatness that he is relentlessly pursuing with painful session after painful session. And he's tantalizingly close now to doing something he may not have thought was possible six or seven years ago. The world junior champion, the world senior champion has 400 meters to go. Can he do it? Can he keep it going? He's ahead of the green lights at the moment. Another 63, but 63.8, he's getting tired. But he's flying the flag brilliantly for Uganda. He comes from the Sabini tribe, who traditionally have a low standing in Ugandan culture. But he's rewriting what's possible in his country. He's a shining example of all that is possible with determination. He's a slight man, but he's big in personality, big in talent and big in ambition. This has been absolutely incredible here. Coming round. He's just got to keep driving. Can Anita Bekele's time, 26.17. We've seen one world record. I think we might be about to see another. This has been absolutely fantastic. The hairs on the back of my neck are standing to attention. It's a standing ovation from everyone here.
He has roared with the heart of an African lion. He's delivered. It's a world record for Joshua Chetagai, the Commonwealth champion. The world champion is the fastest man in history, over six and a quarter miles. And this is a night that will never be forgotten by any of us who were privileged enough to be here. He has shone like a star in the night sky of Spain. That was incredible. That was outstanding. I mean, the, the pressure and the expectation for Joshua to come here tonight, a whole day in the city of Valencia built around him and also on Letzenez Gide. You know, to have the two of them come here and deliver on what was named a world record day is outstanding. It's something that, you know, we all wanted it to happen. But we were fearful, you know, that it wouldn't. But to see it actually happen in front of our eyes is unbelievable. That is just, you know, solidifying his greatness over the past years, running the world championships, world record, world cross country champion. And he just made it look easy. He just got faster. I knew those last four laps, he was going to get faster and faster, but he did get tired going into the last lap, but he was able to carry it through and come home with a world record, a successful year like you couldn't have imagined with you know everything being cancelled. It is just outstanding. Uh, I'm absolutely speechless after tonight. It, it was just, it was so emotional. There are people wearing their cameras out here. Everybody around the stadium standing, trying to get a glimpse of the man of the moment. There's a lovely embrace for Roy Huenweg who started the pacemaking so well. This was the last 400 meters. This was the run for destiny. Zatopek, Clark, Viren, Gabri Selassie, Turgat, Bekele, and now that list has added to it Joshua Cheptegei and surely Sonia O'Sullivan. There's only one thing left for him to do, and that is turn a world gold and a Commonwealth gold into Olympic gold. If we have an Olympic Games next year in Tokyo, what a race that will be between him and the defending champion, Sir Mo Farah. And you'd have to put him down as favorite after what we've seen here tonight and across this year. Not just one world record, not two, but three. What a year. Three races, three world records, no championships. There's a lot to look forward to when the Olympic Games eventually take place and hopefully they will next year. Oh, what a night. It's been such hard work for the organizers. There have been so many health and safety hoops to jump through, but they've done it. And Joshua is just about getting his breath back. He's heading over shortly to the former junior international high hurdler, Marlene Vink Rennings, who will very shortly have a word with him. Has he got enough breath back? I think he has. Joshua Cheptegei getting in position on our socially distanced microphone. Let's hear from the man of the moment. Joshua, congratulations. This is an amazing performance. Can you tell us how you feel? Yeah. Uh, first of all, of course, you know, I wanted to live to the expectation of uh, Valencia, the theme which was Valencia World Record Day. So it feels really well to me that I fulfill my my dream. You have shown many amazing performances. What is this performance? What does it mean to you? I think uh, it means uh, something great to me. Uh, you know, we are trying to write history into the track again. People, uh, of course, we want to make people to know that the track is still exciting and uh, we want to give it all, you know, and, and uh, so that uh, the sports lovers in the world can have uh, the benefit of the time by seeing us, you know. And what does it mean uh, in this year of COVID? You know, we live in a difficult situation now with COVID, but uh, this event can still give us joy, can still give us hope for tomorrow. Knowing that uh, we need to take precautions to defeat the virus, we need to be careful, we don't need to be reckless again, and uh, for sure the world will return back to normal. It will not be any soon because most of the people are not, fail, are not uh, following the precautions and the SOP. So we need to tell them again that we want to get back to normal. 
And the best way we can do that is uh, when all of us get concerned about uh, coming back to normal. You said in your press conference that you want to be the greatest. Does this bring you closer? I think this is just like uh, it lays a foundation of what can still happen and what I want to achieve in the years to come. Thank you very much, Joshua. And please celebrate tonight this beautiful You're world record. Thank you, fans. Thank you, guys. Thank you for the support. Thank you. What a talismanic figure he is turning out to be for this great sport of athletics, proudly taking the Ugandan flag. We can hardly believe, Sonia O'Sullivan and I, what we've seen tonight. We just can't stop smiling and laughing. It's been absolutely incredible. This Stadi Del Turia has borne witness here to not just one world record, but two. Unbelievable. The classic photos, 26-11 on the nose. That record had stood for 15 years to one of the greats. Well, he said he wants to become the top distance runner in history. Well, he's giving himself a chance. Well, Joshua was the second world record of the day. If you're just joining us, here's a recap of Gide's world record earlier. So, Letessa Bekide was out to try and take Tiranish de Barber's world record that had stood since 2008. She too produced a moment of history here. 14.06 plus change, just 22 years of age. Silver last year at the World Championship. She promised us she could run 250 after 250 after 250. She delivered and we finally got a word with her after the race. Congratulations, Letezebeth. It's an amazing achievement. How do you feel? Thank you very much. I'm happy. <laughs> I'm happy. What does the world record mean to you? Yes, uh, this is a long time of dream and uh, I'm very happy by this competition and uh, it is very big uh, <laughs> for me. How does it feel to, do, to run the world record here in Valencia? Yes, Valencia is a very nice uh, place and uh, I like it. <laughs> I like uh, Valencia and uh, I will uh, break for the next time in also 10,000 meters another. And what does the world record mean to Ethiopia? Yes, uh, it is very nice. I mean, before this is the Tornesh Dibaba record and then uh, now also in Ethiopia and I'm very happy. Thank you very much, Natasha. Uh, Thank you to Global Communication also. Thank you to Valencia and for all, for all yours. Thank you. He is the king tonight on top of the world, and why not? I hope he's allowed a small beer this evening. Possibly not, <laughs> because he's taking part in the World Half Marathon Championships in Gdynia in Poland in a couple of weeks' time. Looking forward to that one, seeing his uh, big debut over the half marathon. But what a night. Sonia, your, your reflections on an extraordinary hour for distance running and for athletics. Absolutely extraordinary. It's been such a special evening. I can't possibly have imagined that this was going to happen tonight. You know, you, you set these things up, you build them up. But, you know, there's always that, you know, uncertainty of what's actually going to happen when the athletes line up and race because, you know, you just don't know. But to have the results there tonight, to have those two fantastic races, it will be the most memorable night for the times that we're living in at the moment for anybody who was able to be here tonight to witness it live in the stadium up on the walls outside the stadium i think they will remember this for the rest of their lives and they will all be supporting joshua at the olympics next year and let's a good, good day also of course yeah i i, I totally agree that there's something just really honest and likeable about Joshua Cheptegei. He says he wants to change the course of secondary education in his country. He's got big ambitions and not just within the framework of distance running. The last 50 meters, he stuck out his tongue. He promised he'd deliver 
He's raced three times this year and broken the world record on every single occasion. He will be the toast of Uganda tonight and tomorrow. And when he eventually gets home, there will be the most almighty socially distanced party. We really hope you've enjoyed the action tonight from Estadi Del Turia. Two proud Africans are sitting on top of the world. Natessa Bekide and Joshua Cheptegei have delivered a night none of us will ever, ever forget. Thanks ever so much for your company. See you next time. Goodbye. What a track, what, what a city. <laughs>